Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode here on Pastiche of Skin and today we are playing Tales of Basaria. Yes, we have played this before. The demo has finally released out on European and American markets and a lot of people are looking forward to playing Tales of Basaria. I looked at this game, I looked at the mechanics of this game in the original trailer, original cold open for Made in Japan months back. Like, like if you want to go and look at it, check the video that's linked at the end of this video to see what my original opinions were. But this time I'm actually going to get a little bit more of the actual story. Because I didn't get anything from the last one. All I got was like the conversations people were having. And there seems to be a lot of the moments in Tales of Basaria are heavily focused on the moments of people having conversations with each other between battles whenever they're traveling from point A to point B. And I don't have any context for any of that because it was all in Japanese and I didn't have any idea what was going on. But now with it translated into English, we may actually get a better idea. So let's take a look. I mean, couldn't be. It's like I can't actually lose anything from this experience. So I might as well do it. Um, I, I just don't know the Tales of series. And I know this one is almost a direct prequel to some of the parts of the demo will be different from the full game. Yeah. Um, that I haven't actually... Um, I don't I don't know what the experience is of a Tales of series game because I've never played one other than Tales of Symphonia, which I've heard is not a brilliant game in the first place compared to the rest of the series. And I haven't... Uh, I know this is actually a direct prequel, but many, many years previous to an older game in the series that came out recently. So, shit, uh, for a game that's actually got 16 titles in its history, I don't know that much about the Tales of the series, so let's see if I can pick up something from this. I'm going to do the English dub because... Why not? We've gone to the bother of actually getting the English version now. I need for the tutorials really at this point. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, okay, let's take a look here. So, basic controls, of course. Uh, area maps, start skit. Oh, so you start skits to talk to people at any time, really? Alright. Um, yeah, it's not really much else to do here. Beautiful waters. So, this is Muckler Beach. I hope she's actually here. Hmm. What is it, Laffy said? I was told that women's looks can be deceiving, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to see. My hair loopy is actually a little bit confused. I was interested. Now I'm sad. I'm interested. Now I'm sad. They lie as easily as they breathe, and men can never see through their deceptions. I totally. Jesus, he's eating the red pill. Sounds like you've both been through hard times. The wounds women leave on a man's heart take longer to heal than a cut delivered by a sword. That's true, though. It's that bad? Beware a maiden's tears, boy, and guard yourself well. That's my advice to you. Beware tears and guard myself. Don't put any weird ideas into Lafayette's head, you two. They're just facts. If you fill his head with any more garbage, I'm eating both of you. Yes, ma'am. Yikes. The swordsman and the pirate having troubles with women? <laughs> well, women are nothing if not difficult. I have the deepest sympathy for you both. What do you think of the ladies' reactions? Well, Velvet won't eat either of you, and Mogilu didn't seem sympathetic at all. See? Appearances can be deceiving. And it seems you've absorbed the lesson well. Right. I'm not like that, though. Huh? Yes. Some women use their tears to manipulate others, but not all do, and I for one despise such duplicity. The women who did that to Aizen and Rokuro are just the extreme. I'm the paladin! I can see how much you hate dishonesty, Eleanor. Huh? Um, yeah, that's right. Be a good example for the boy, then, so he doesn't end up like Rokuro and me. I intend to do just that, whether or not you ask it of me. Eleanor is a lot stronger than she appears. Indeed she does. And this seems to be going on forever. I completely forgot how long these cutscenes were. Hello there, creature. Let's have a wee punch. Punchy punchies. Punchy punchies. Punchy punchies. There we go. I can't remember how to do any of this 
combat! That's the end for you! <laughs> I honestly just button bashed there. I had no idea what was going on. That was a lot of noise and a lot of punching. Alright, so, um, at least I'm getting context of the characters now, because what I got from the last time was, um, I don't know who you are, don't know what you guys are doing, don't know why you are here, but, uh, fair enough, I'm glad you are actually on your adventure. So now, it's obviously, like, there's a lot of, like, this game, and what I feel and imagine the rest of the series is actually like, is that it's very, uh, context-driven kind of a skits that allow you to get to really, really, really fall for the characters, and I can see why... That is unbelievably attractive to an RPG player because it would be unbelievably attractive to me. But um, yeah, maybe. Oh, lovely seashells. I've got more of those. I don't know what I'm going to use them for, but that's really interesting. Um, I, I, I just I can see why the game appeals. I'm just. I'm, I'm, I'm just not too sure about whether or not this would be frustrating with the constant interruptions. Someone so different can be a Moloch just the same as Laffy said or Aizen. I understand your doubts. It's quite the tangly mess. I'll tell you anything! In that case, I've been wondering, what's underneath your hat? <laughs> oh no! Anything but that! So, we've hit a wall already. But that ribbon flaps around and gets in the way, right? Could I take it off for you? No! No! That's not possible! You mustn't remove the ribbon! Why not? That's I'll go Super Saiyan! It's all cans with you. All right, is there anything you can tell me? I could talk about what type of Malakim we are, or our position in the world of Malakim, or our abilities. Oh! I'd like to know all that. Then I will tell you. Listen closely. We Norman are a well-established race of Malakim. Compared to other Malakim, we aren't as adept at manipulating natural forces, but we excel at drawing out and heightening the abilities of others. Think of them as a convenient <gasps> power-up. They're also known as common spirits. <sighs> oh, sorry. Don't even say that. We Norman hate being called that. Why is it so painful for you? Because it makes people think we're average and unremarkable. That's why we work so hard to show how we're all different. Well, but ain't that swell? Quirky speaking mannerisms. Don't sweat it. That's a perfectly common thing to worry about. <laughs> oh, so common. So yeah, um. Definitely. Whoa, oh God, that's starting. Huh? The connection between Moloch and Vessel. Very short scene. Thoughts and feelings? Um, sort of. When I'm dwelling inside Eleanor, I can see what she sees and hear what she hears. But I can't read her thoughts or her emotions. Sitting in a box doesn't teach you how the box feels. When I'm inside Eleanor? Wait, what? In that case. I want to give her as little time alone as possible. Uh, I don't want to bathe with her, all right? I know. You're a boy and all. For her baths, we can send Bienfu. No, that's a bad idea. It'll have to be Mogulu. Or myself. Phew! What sort of boundaries have you and Eleanor drawn? How do you sleep? We talk before bed sometimes. But it's not like I'm sleeping by her side or anything. It's easier for me to tell when she wakes up if I'm dwelling inside her. Does she ever get out of bed at night? Not in my experience. And she I have no jokes for this! This is writing itself! Why is this little boy inside a woman? At all times? He, looks so stern. Mm -hmm. he likes to dwell on her, but he doesn't want to actually be with her or anything else, so... Softer, you could say. She lets her hair down, too. And I think it's kind of prettier that way. Huh. What he likes. Well, keep an eye on her, but. What? Oh, very what puzzled by a lot of this. Huh? I have no context for any of this, and it. Here. What are those penguins doing? Probably keeping their eggs warm? Most likely. They look like, like a mama, papa. Pinions 
are monogamous, faithful creatures. They never leave their mate. <sighs> Just like lobsters. So they lay eggs because they're like husband and wife. But... They're lesbian seagulls. <gasps> That's... well... So, Laffy said, here's an interesting fact. A single penguin egg actually contains dozens of smaller orange eggs. They eat each other until the strongest survives. Yep. They have the texture of caviar and the rich flavor of sea urchins. Ah. So they're more like fish than birds. So you've eaten them. How cruel. Look how much they care about their young. Why would they make air plenty, but they seem to miss their meat. They're considered a delicacy in some circles. Top a bowl of rice with these crunchy eggs and some rich pangan thigh meat, and you get a dish called family fricassee. Ah. <laughs> I love it. The same as a pizza I used to have that actually had like chicken and egg on it, and it was like, which comes first? Which do you eat first? Actually, in fact, that was one of the things. I went to an Italian restaurant. Um, this is weirdly. I went to an Italian restaurant in Paris for no apparent reason other than the fact that I could. Hey, how about that? Got you into a fight. Look at that. You die. You die now. Die, 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 die. Ah, screw this. You want to die? Boom, down you go. Hey, is everyone all right? Yes, everyone's absolutely fine. Got a bunch of equipment that we did not require in any way, shape, or form. So, yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, I went to an Italian restaurant in Paris once and ordered a pizza and got it uh, in a, some bizarre style where it had an egg in the center of the pizza that had a runny yolk. So whenever you're eating it with a knife and fork, you could actually cut off bits of pizza and dip it in the giant egg. It was delicious, but I purposely got um, like pepperoni and chicken on top of it because I wanted to have the egg and chicken on the same thing. Probably a terrible, terrible idea, but it went down well together. <laughs> So essentially it was the same as their family fricassee. I just had that on a pizza. Is that? I don't know. What is that? Grimoire? <sighs> uh... She's moving away. Oh, we scared the babies. When you're scared of babies, mama come to play. Come here, mama. Whoa. Okay. No, just a big lizard demon. You big fucker, ye. One, two, slappity punch, punching the slaps, slappity punch, punching the slaps, and slapping the punches, knocking everything down. Yeah. Eat all the punches. Uh oh, did I accidentally switch characters? Yes, I did. It's building up uh oh, knocked in the air. Oh. oh, down you go. But I am the victor. And learning speed has gone up by 10%. Woohoo! And that was Tales of Basaria, scenario mode. So, what did we learn? What did we learn from this experience? This game 
is very wordy. Um, I don't know. A Tales of series seems to actually be like it's one of the reasons why I didn't play Tales of Symphonia as much as I probably wanted to whenever I got it on the PS3. And it was um it was it was very wordy. It was very, very slow paced for me for me to get any movement forward and that was just uh, in a time whenever I had literally no time to play RPGs at all. I wasn't even doing this channel at that point. I was just working full time. So yeah, I, I might be able to actually pull into Tales of Bessaria and enjoy it a bit more. But I have a critical problem of actually playing games that have very, very long um, dialogue sections that actually all they do is add great flavor to character. Whenever I was a younger man, I would have had the time and life of the day, enjoying every little moment of that, giggling along, same as if I was watching a TV series. But my desires for interactivity in video games is so much higher now for me to actually be making progress at all times that I tend to skip a lot of this stuff. Um, that's not a good thing. It's a, it's one of the things I would, uh, my younger self would absolutely hate about my modern gaming habits. But um, yeah, it's just the uh, nature of the beast when you have to work your way through a lot of games really, really quickly. So yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying that and like the character interactions i want to know more about why that kid is inside a woman at all times so tales of Basaria, available january 27th um on in europe and can not buy it obviously they want you to buy it they put it into the goddamn store but yeah um is there is there much to really see ah, tales of Basaria. if you're a man of the tales of series you're obviously going to be interested in getting this but as somebody who's a Final Fantasy fan, um, this series kind of takes me completely by the wayside. I like the combat, even though I was literally just button bashing the hell out of that. It's action oriented. It is not turn based. It is um, kind of like a, a, a multi fighter arena fighter where you're switching. And you have to choose things that are probably based on the stats of the characters, which I didn't look at any at all in this. I was just obviously overpowered. So yeah, there's. There's a physical interactivity in the combat in this. So if you enjoy that in your RPGs, you might get a kick out of this. This has a lot of cutscene kind of like skitty conversational moments. Obviously, you have to activate them, so you could skip a lot of them. So if you don't like all the wordy, 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 then you might not actually have too much of a problem. You can just skip a lot of that extra flavor stuff. This was kind of fun. Um, it's, this is going to be very similar to what I said in the uh, Made in Japan series. The action is interesting. It's uh, enjoyable play. But the um, what I've learned from the story has actually got me intrigued enough to want to know why these people are traveling together, how this kind of ragtag bunch ended up in the same spot, and how this relates into the wider world. So yeah, they, they, they've got me sold to the point where this might be a rental for me, but for somebody else who's actually got the time and the ability to in, the chance to enjoy RPGs to their fullest whenever you actually get to go at a low pace on them, then yeah, the, this might be for you. So guys, thank you very much for watching. If you thought this was actually interesting, informative, or helpful in any way, shape, or form, or just funny, uh, this has been Tales of Basaria for the PS4. You can hit the subscribe button up here and actually subscribe to the Passage of Skin channel. So whenever you hit that, you get to see all the videos as they come out live in your subscription box. You can also hit the wee uh, notification bell underneath if you want to get notifications when they come out as well. And over on this side, you can actually see videos that I've done previously. Uh, different playlists, different videos I've previously done. In fact, I'll make sure to put one on here at the bottom specifically for Tales of Basaria. It'll be the one that I actually did previously for Made in Japan months ago before this game was actually renounced for release in the UK and EU. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Until the next time, I will see you all in the next video.